During my investigations, I was able to gain access to one of the oldest church buildings in Newton Arts, a non-subscribing Presbyterian church. I was in church on Friday afternoon, when there was no one in the building except for me and the caretaker, and I took several photographs of the inside and outside of the building. I also was given a brief history of the church by the caretaker and allowed to photograph the portraits that were hanging in the back vestry. These photographs were mainly of the church ministers, some of which dated back to the 1700s. Apart from the age of the photographs, which gave them a certain historical gravitas, one image in particular stood out for me. It was a Reverend McElroy, who was photographed some time in the late 1960s, early 1970s. It wasn't by any means the oldest or most interesting photograph from a historical point of view, but what struck me was the fact that he was holding a lit, half-smoked cigarette. Such a taboo thing in our modern anti-smoking culture. I couldn't imagine any minister or pastor I know smoking, or even if they did, they most definitely would not permit being photographed with a lit cigarette in their hands. It would be a terrible witness to others and a tarnish to their spiritual testimony. Such a historically placed image linked to a time when smoking was culturally the norm and totally acceptable. The second thing that brought me back in time, so to speak, was the stained glass windows. They were of Bible verses, stories from the Bible and events from memorials of the life of the church. Again, they were nothing particularly outstanding in themselves, but having the opportunity to go into a more traditional church building gave me the opportunity to see with fresh eyes a snapshot of a different time in the history of Christianity when the closest laity could come to seeing God would be sitting in the pews of their church looking at backlit images of the stained glass windows. It led me to rethinking my ideas for my research piece. I started to think of other things that are currently seen as unacceptable and taboo by some within Christendom. What topic covers these two ideas within the Christian world? It is controversial but is also used by Christians to display their faith. The answer I came up with are tattoos. Tattoos are a polarising subject for many believers. They either love them or, due to a verse from Leviticus 19.28 in the Bible that is interpreted as saying, Do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on your cells. Others think they are a mark from the devil, but I see a possible parallel with, and therefore posit, that tattoos on the skin of Christians is the modern equivalent of the more traditional iconography of stained glass windows and the old stone crosses known as high crosses. That is, they are both ways to express the faith of the people and are used as a vehicle to share the Christian gospel and the testimony of the believer. You just need to do a Google search to see there are thousands of tattoos containing Bible verses that are pertinent to the wearer, including stories from the Bible, crucifixion of Jesus in the Last Supper for example, and many believers have tattoos from before they were a believer. Or they have had a tattoo after they became a Christian that is not overtly Christian in nature. All of these have a part in the faith journey of the wearer. I saw a subject that I could investigate, that for me incorporates the elements I want to discover. Art, faith, where God is in the believer's life, how do believers act out their faith. The topic is a little bit controversial and it will stretch my photographic skill set and hopefully improve me as a photographer. My research into the historical use of tattoos has so far led me to several journals, books and websites. The journal Tattoos as Narratives, Skin and Self, Public Journals of Semiotics by Chris William Martin. The author starts off by saying he argues that tattoos should be viewed in the light that reflects the endless potential of human self-expression, which, in the light of my investigation, I would agree with. The author posits that tattoos are used as semiotic representations. That is, they facilitate the wearer to express their personal story. This again rings true with my proposal that Christians are using the tattoo now to facilitate telling their faith journey. There has also been a softening towards tattoos in the celebrity and fashion world where companies are now using a 
the tattooed bodies of celebrities to advertise their products. Another example of the softening of attitude towards tattoos has been through the Museum of Modern Art, who included two pieces of the tattooist artist Rox in their exhibition, Items is Fashion Modern, where tattoos was listed among 111 items shaping the past, present and future of fashion identity. In the interview, Rock states, Tattoo tells our personal narrative and makes us feel empowered. She also states, I tattoo the full spectrum of professionals, surgeons, cardiologists, CEOs, art enthusiasts, see my work and think of it as commissioning a piece of work they will carry with them forever. The article also states, Once considered a means of defining oneself in opposition to mainstream society, the ever-increasing cultural value of tattoo continues to blur the distinctions between popular and high culture, allowing the work of prestigious tattooists to be professionally acknowledged and documented among other fine arts, despite the living fleshly canvas. To begin my venture into this research, I put out a post on my Facebook page requesting any Christians who have tattoos to volunteer to be photographed. I was overwhelmed by the reaction. In one evening alone, I got 30 people who contacted me and were more than happy to get photographed. Many of them were actually quite self-deprecating about themselves and the art on their skins. They couldn't believe someone would have taken an interest in their personal piece of living art. And many of them started with their message with something along the lines of I'm not sure if my tattoo is good enough or what you want, but... The people who contacted me were both male and female, ranged in age from 20 to 60 plus years old. They were from different educational backgrounds, different professions and income levels. So I feel I have a good range of people to facilitate this research piece. My plan is to carry out several photo sessions and bring in between four and six people to photograph. Sontag states, a photograph could also be described as a quotation, which makes a book of photographs like a book of quotation. And an increasingly common way of presenting photographs in book form is to match photographs themselves with quotes. With this in mind, I am going to interview and ask each sitter to tell me why their tattoos are on their skin, what they mean to them, and what relationship the tattoo has had with their faith journey. I have already held one photo shoot where five people, Jade, Aaron, Simon, Craig and Amber, attended the session for me to photograph them and their tattoos. They are all devout and active Christians in their churches. One is an ex-model while also has a degree in theology. One is a musician. One is a hairstylist. One is a biomolecular engineer and part-time wedding photographer. And one is an ex-RAF flight engineer. I have tried the initial first photo shoot of willing and keen subjects where they are open to any reasonable posing suggestion. I can't totally say I'm 100% happy with the outcome. Critically speaking, when I take myself out of the equation and look at the images without the emotional link that, are, that they are my photographs, I still haven't quite hit what I want to achieve. This led me to investigating how other artists have worked to achieve what they have felt or what they want the viewer to feel about their image. In his landscapes, Ansel Adams uses filters and a lot of post-production work in the darkroom to achieve the dramatic vistas he wanted to convey. David Hockney wanted to break out of the constraints of the edges that always exist within a painting and wanted to show more than one angle of view in his subject, so he pieced multiple images from varying angles to create photo collages which, in his book Hockney on Photography, he calls joiners. This joining of photographs from different angles of the same subject interests me as I am trying to find a way to show more than just the photograph of a tattoo in the image. I want to encapsulate the sitter, the tattoo, and the story behind the tattoo in one image. One of my contemporary photographic heroes is Platon, the English-Greek photographer who has photographed many well-known personalities. His work is striking and drills into the personality of the sitter. Recently, Netflix produced a series called Abstract, of which Platon was one of the artists interviewed. I was able to see his style of photographing the sitter, 
I was struck with how much time he takes talking to his subject before he lifts a camera. He sits the subject on a posing box and sits at their feet quite self-deprecatingly and gets to know the person behind the persona. In the program, he explains that he asks them some probing questions about their life and experiences. And the resulting effect is the sitter is thinking about the topic of the conversation while Platon photographs them. I used a variation of this technique when photographing the first four sitters, and I think I had some degree of success. But I want a stranger to feel like they know the sitter by looking at my photographs. I've also watched and listened to several talks by Catherine Opie. I really liked her relaxed delivery method during her talks and how she thinks about her photography. I am enjoying the struggle I have when I look at her photographs. Some of them are, well, shall we say, NSFW. But once uh, past the explicit nature of some of her work and listened to numerous talks, I'm beginning to understand that her work is to investigate and push the boundaries of what is mainstream culturally acceptable as art and to deliver an image that is both banal in its subject while striking in its use. The intent is to discuss the association of tattoos with Christian faith by giving the owners of the tattoos who also have a faith to a chance to tell their story and to allow those who are inquisitive to view the tattoos and read their stories from the safety of their, say, armchair. Thank you.